Sometimes we're a lot smarter than we realize. We do something, we don't even give it a second thought, and then when you break down the physics of what we've just done, it turns out to be very complicated. And clapping is one of those things. Think of all the different clapping sounds you can make with your hands. You could do this or that or all these different sounds, and you intuitively know how to do that and play your hands like an instrument. Well, the physics of that is actually really impressive. So this week for the Bat Signal, I'm gonna show you the physics behind what you already know how to do intuitively. And it turns out, clapping your hands is really similar to this. This is a brand new paper. It's in the journal Physical Review Research. I have a link to the paper in the description of this video. And what these researchers show is that when you clap your hands together, it's not a percussion instrument, it's a wind instrument. And specifically, you create a Helmholtz resonator when you clap your hands together, which is just crazy. Now, the best known kind of Helmholtz resonator is a bottle that you blow across. It makes a noise, and the noise is made because when you blow across the top, it changes the pressure in the neck and it forces air down inside, but then when the pressure gets too high, the air gets pushed back out, but then the pressure gets too low and the air goes back in and it oscillates. And the frequency of the oscillations in the neck of the bottle dictate the frequency of the sound. So if I want to change that frequency, I just have to change the geometry of the bottle. If I take some of the liquid out of this bottle, it'll make it lower pitched. So if I know the volume of the bottle, if I know the length of the neck, and I know the width of the opening, I can predict exactly, using physics, what the frequency of the sound is gonna be. The researcher said, hey, when you clap your hands, you're creating a Helmholtz resonator. Look, if we put baby powder all over people's hands and have them clap, you can see the air shooting out between the thumb and the finger. That is basically a very short-lived Helmholtz resonator. You've got a chamber, that's where the two palms come together. You've got a neck, which is this little piece of the finger right here. And then you've got an opening, which is set by the dimensions and the, the configuration of the hands. And so just like you can change the frequency with a bottle, you can change the frequency of clapping by changing the geometry of the hands. If you want a low noise, you make as big a chamber as possible. That's why cupping your hands makes a low noise. If you don't want as low a noise, but you want a, a medium noise, just hit your palms together. You still have a chamber in there between your two hands, but it's not as big. It's higher pitched. And then if you want a really high pitched noise, hit fingers onto the palms so that there's almost no chamber at all. And that's really high pitched. And so, you can change the frequency by changing the configuration of your hands. And you already know that. That's my whole point, is that you've already figured all this out just by playing with your hands and knowing what makes different sounds. The other thing they showed is that if you want to make it louder, hit your hands harder together. You already knew that too. But they showed that you can make the, a louder noise with this instrument if you've got higher pressure and more air getting pushed out. So little noise, loud noise. I, just, I love it. I, I'm obsessed with this paper. I just think it's the neatest thing. I, I never thought of clapping as playing a wind instrument. You know, when you clap, you're not thinking of it as going Every week I find five great science stories. This is just one of them. If you want the other four, the only way to get them is to sign up for my newsletter. It's called The Bat Signal. Just go to followthebatsignal.com.